brass, brash, brash, syn <laughs> brash syndrome. If you've never heard of brash syndrome, then I'm really glad you found this video. What brash stands for is it's a syndrome, brash syndrome, so it's a whole bunch of things together, is you have bradycardia, renal failure, AV blockades, shock, and hyperkalemia. So these are, it's a cycular um, positive loop feedback, which is really bad. So today we're going to be discussing how do we pick up on this? Why is it important? Who are those who are most vulnerable? What's a bit of a pathophysiology behind it, as well as how to treat them? Why is BRASH important? So the reason why this is important is that it is a cycle or a loop of things that are going to happen to someone who is on AV blockades and has hyperkemia and are going to go into um, shock and hyperperfusion. And so when we are dealing with someone like this, it will be important to know that someone who's on AV blockades and someone who is prone to hyperkalemia is likely to go into this spiral of doom. If you look at this diagram, you'll see that patients who are on AV blockades, patients who are prone to hypovolemia and those who have um, sensitive kidneys are pretty much old people are at the greatest risk of getting the brush syndrome. So in these patients, we need to be most aware of this. The way that the syndrome works is that you'll see here there's this cycle of doom. It doesn't matter where you start. Let's say we start at the bradycardia. The bradycardia leads to shock. The shock leads to um, less um, provision to the kidneys, which causes kidney failure. The kidneys then don't get rid of the potassium. Then we have hyperkalemia. You could start at the hyperkalemia, which causes bradycardia, which causes shock, which causes renal failure, which causes more potassium, which causes more um, more bradycardia, which then causes more shock. So it doesn't really matter where you start in the cycle, it's this positive loop feedback that goes round and round the spiral of doom. As you can see, like patients who are taking AV blockades are even going to worsen the bradycardia, and then patients who are taking um, uh, like calcium channel blockers or pe um, people who are taking um, uh, beta blockers are going to worsen this. That would, that would be like a typical AV blockade. And then you also have patients who are on um, potassium sparing diuretics or you have pe people who are on like ACE inhibitors. These are going to further um, worsen the situation. So that's kind of how the whole system works. Uh, the way that we're going to be really um, treating this is that we're going to treat it as a syndrome and not just as like, well, just a bradycardia, because it's not just a bradycardia. The hyperkalemia causes bradycardia and they're on an AV blockade, which causes bradycardia. So it's not just one thing. So we would start off with giving calcium. Calcium will help with protecting the heart from the hyperkalemia and try and reverse the um, calcium channel or beta blocker medication that they're on. We're then gonna give them fluids because they will be hypovolemic um, or hypotensive. So we wanna bring up their um, fluid status. We're then gonna to start to get rid of that potassium. So whether we're gonna give um, insulin, dextrose, salbutamol, um, sodium bicarb, and then some Lasix to get rid of it. Uh, just, care, just be careful of their fluid status. And then you're gonna be giving them inotropes. So whether that's noradrenaline or, or dopamine or whatever you are considering you want to use, depending on what the condition and age and how the heart of the patient is. I made a video up here. I'll link to a video I've done on inotropes. Very interesting, we break apart which one is what and which one would be best for which situation. It is important to note that patients who are having a brush syndrome or a, a episode of this is that they can have ECGs that look like that, that don't show hyperkalemia in the ECG. So that would be the one like little tip and trick that I would drop for you is that it doesn't always show typical signs and symptoms and that the ECG can show no hyperkalemia when there actually is hyperkalemia. So guys, I hope you did enjoy this. Please drop um, any questions, comments, or queries into the comments below. And if you have any um, videos or topics you'd like me to discuss, and thank you for your time. Keep well, stay safe, and bye for now.